Hi, my name is Puge, let me not waste your time. Today I'll be showing you how to make the shatter effect in DaVinci Resolve. Shout out to Vision for letting me teach his method. To start off, I have my clip like this, it's 24 frames long, and then we're gonna go inside of Fusion. If you don't know how to use Fusion, I do suggest go watching Casey Ferris's Intro to Fusion video, as that goes over the basics and how to understand what I'm doing here. All right, let's get started. So first we have our media in over here, and then our media out, I'm just gonna disconnect the media in to the media out over here, and then we're gonna have our media in over here, and then we're gonna start. So first we're gonna add an image plane. So we're gonna shift space, type in image plane, and then we're gonna add that to our graph over here here and then we're going to connect this media in into our image plane over here and then we have our image in our 3d space over here if we click two on the node we can view it over here if you hold alt and middle mouse button we could pan around the view and see what we have going on and if we actually disconnect this and just look at this over here i'm going to turn on wireframe and we have things called subdivisions on our 3d object so basically that's how many little planes are made up of this one big plane over here on our first image plane over here we're going to make the subdivision count all the way down to one so we just have one subdivision that's over here and then we're going to connect our media in into the image plane right here and then we can turn off wireframe and we have our image that is in the viewer that's right here next we're going to add another image plane node so we're going to hit shift space image plane here and then we're going to drag it over here and then we have viewed this image plane so let's turn on wireframe and it's going to make our subdivision count to five so we have 25 little squares that are over here and then we turn wireframe off again and next thing we're going to add is a replicate 3d node so shift space type in replicate 3d and this is how we are going to make make our little shards that are going to come out. So we're going to connect this image plane 3D, this second one that we have here, connected to the yellow input of the replicate 3D here, and then we're going to have our image plane connected to the green input of replicate 3D, and we're going to view our replicate 3D, and so you can see our shards are overlapping each other right now because the image plane is too big. So in order to fix that, what we're going to do is take the amount of subdivisions that we have over here and divide that by the scale of the image plane that we have here. So we have five subdivisions in our image plane that's over here. That's going to be 25 slices that we have. So if we go to our image plane, go over to the transform tab and down to our scale we're going to divide that by the number of subdivisions we have on the other node so we're going to divide this by five and then you can see right here we can control and scroll in we can see we have our 25 different shards from our replicate 3d and they're showing up over here next thing we're going to do is add a uv map so we hit shift space and type in uv map add that here and let's connect our replicate 3d to our uv map over here and basically what this does it allows us to have our original image show up on the replicates and all these little subdivisions instead of having it on individual little squares so what we need to do is change the orientation to z and then we have our image here and then hit fit and center to make sure that our image is showing up on the plane correctly just like this now what we're going to do is hit lock uvs to animate objects and now what we have is our image and it's stuck onto all those little planes that we have set up over here and then we're going to displace those planes with a 3d display so type in displace 3d and we're going to add this over here and then we have this little thing set up that we have here and in order to use a displace node what we need to do is have a displacement map so we're going to make our displacement map over here and it's a little bit complicated how to do it so what we're going to do we're going to first add a fast noise node we're going to view our fast noise node see what we've got over here here, hit two on our node, and we, have, we know what's happening. We're gonna change our detail to 10, and we're gonna change our brightness to negative one. And then we're gonna change our scale to around four, I think is what works best usually. Then we're gonna go to our color tab, and we're gonna leave this first color alone, and then go to our second color, and bring the blue channel and the alpha channel down like this, and then we have what we need here. Next, we're gonna add a merge node, so our, grab our merge node from our tools over here. Put this to the green input, so if we hold down Alt and then let go on the merge, we can connect this to the four foreground on that little menu pops up and then we're going to add another background node connect it to the yellow part of the merge over here let's view our background node and we want this to be gray so what we need to do is just open this up we're going to put our saturation to zero put our value 2.5 and that'll give us a gray color there and so if we look at our merge this is our displacement map last thing we're going to add to this is a little rectangle mask and then put this on the blue part of the fast noise that's here let's change this with all the way up to one and then the height all the way up to one as well and i'll show you what we need to do in order to use that correctly so let's add this merge node to the displace 3d and this is going to be our displacement map and if we view the displace 3d you can see our image is looking a little wild so what we need to do is change some settings on our displace 3d let's change the channel to rgb let's change the mode to relative and this is good right there and then we're going to change our bias to negative 0.5 so it stays centered where we had it before and then we could change our scale just like this a little bit like that and then we could zoom in just a little bit and we could change this place however we want we want 
we don't want the edges to be too messed up because we want it to be a normal image first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our rectangle and put down the border width so that kind of fixes our edges, but we still have the displacement going on inside the image. And so uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to reset the UV map that's here. So we're just going to copy this UV map, hit control C on this node, hit control shift V to paste an instance of this node so it has the exact same settings. And then we can connect the displacement 3D to the instance node over here. So you, the 3D map, and so we see that is normal. And then we're going to add a transform 3D. It's just space transform 3D. And then we're going to add our 3D render that we can get from over here and connect that to the transform node and then our render 3D to the media out. And let's view our media out to see what we have here. Let's zoom in on our transform 3D just a bit. So it fills up the image. Some around there should be good. And then we're going to do our animation. So in order to do the animation, what we need to do is go to the replicate 3D. Go to the replicate 3D. Go down on the translation templates over here. We're going to keep them at the beginning. The Y is going to be at zero. And then at 23, you're going to have our value go to about negative one. So I find best works and then we are going to go back to the beginning over here go to our jitter tab over here which allows us to control the randomness position of our shards so let's just keyframe all this over here the transform jitter the translation jitter let's keyframe all of those let's keyframe all of the rotation as well and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to change the values of this over here so we're going to go to the next the end of our comp over here keyframe all these values again let's change it this x value to three and then we want y value up like that and then we're going to change our depth move the y value a little bit more and then put our Z value uh, out to about one ish as well. And then we're going to move our rotations to about 180 for all of them. I just hit 180 and enter and then type in 180 for all of those. And then if we go back to our beginning, you can see our animation of our shatter. It's not going down further far enough as I wanted to. So let's just make this translation go down just like that. And then now we have our shatter effect just like that. And yeah, if you want to have a different pattern for your shatter, what you need to do is just go to your fast noise and then go to the noise tab and sieve it. So that gives you a different types of cutouts that you have over there. And then that is basically all that if you want to change the animation of the replicate 3d all you have to do is go into this blind tab and then check off the replicate 3d so you have everything that's here and an easy way that you can change the different types of spline is if you just hit control a and then select all the keyframes hit control t that gives you this little ease in menu so this allows you to change the look of your graphs like that i also have also hit control a and the control s to smooth out all these keyframes and then you could move around like this for your movement and then you could change the animation however you like it if you don't think it's going down on the z far enough you can just make it go faster on the y just like that if we increase that value and yeah that is our shatter effect that we have here and so let me just give you a basic rundown of what is happening we are having our image plane 3d there's one little shard that we're going here and then we have our image plane 3d over here with multiple subdivisions and in our replicate 3d we are putting this little image plane on all these different subdivisions on this image plane that's over here so now there's 25 different pictures of this the scene that's here on our uv map and it's condensing all those little images down into one image and it's also sticking each little section of this image is having one little part of the scene so it's stuck there on our displacement what we're doing here is creating a displacement map with this pattern over here in order to create a different pattern for our shards and using the rectangle over there to limit the outside of the image to have a different pattern and then we're using another instance node for our uv map in order to fix in order to fix the displacement of the uv map there so we still have the displacement of the shards but we still have our image looking correct and not messed up then we have our transform 3d which is putting it in the right space for our 3d render to view on our media out just like that. If you're interested in other 3D effects and to resolve like 3D camera typography, click this video right here. Otherwise, subscribe and have a good day.